Everyone needs forgiveness. I'm the Savior. 
will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So, I, I'm going to ask you to stand. Please stand. And we're going to sing. Uh, this next song is uh, taken directly from the scripture that was just read. And we're going to sing it straight through once. And then we're going to go into a round. I have faith in you. We can do this. <laughs> um, so, uh, we're going to sing it all the way through once. And then this half over here is going to start singing it again from the beginning <laughs> with the three of us, Mike and Tom and myself. And then when we get halfway through, after we've sung the Behold line twice, we're going to keep going. And that half okay, is going to start singing with these lovely folks over here. And so you'll do it twice through as a round. And then we will all come together at the end and say that we should be called the children of God. At least that's the plan. <laughs> and the always work out. Let's try it. <laughs> All right.
try not to take it as an insult that there's a mass exodus happening. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth's helping you out. Oh. <laughs> so, um, today we will be looking at something a little bit different uh, in the sermon. Um, I won't be going verse by verse or chapter by chapter through the Gospel of Mark, which we have been doing this uh, summer and fall. Uh, because this is a special service, we're uh, going to be hearing about something a little bit different. And today, instead of um, a particular verse, we're going to be hearing about St. Petersburg. Um, I don't mean the city in Florida where I did a lot of my growing up, although that is a lovely city, that St. Petersburg. It's very sunny there. They like to talk about how they have, you know, 710 consecutive days of sunshine or something like that. In fact, some of you may remember back in 2018, when we had an extreme cold snap in January of 2018 here, and uh, it got down to negative 10 here in Charles City, and snow wouldn't melt, and the ice wouldn't melt on the roads, and um, our house generator wouldn't start. And I learned so many new things that night. When Matt and I were out there with a the flashlight um, at negative 10 degrees, I learned that there's a difference between winter oil and summer oil. And if you don't put winter oil into your generator, it won't flow when it gets below a certain temperature, a temperature that it's really never supposed to get in Virginia. The generator guy was like, well, this never happened. <laughs> and um, I also learned that batteries don't really love it when it gets um, to negative 10. And the battery says, nah, I think you're on your own. <laughs> Go old school, rub some sticks back together. So um, when, when that was happening to us, uh, my mother and father had just happened to leave town two days before <laughs> the blizzard hit and go down to St. Petersburg, Florida to visit relatives in January. And they sent us a postcard <laughs> that said, greetings from sunny St. Petersburg, Florida, where there's sunshine 703 days in a row. <laughs> we've, we've worked through it. <laughs> we've been to counseling. I have, I have mostly forgiven them for doing that while we were trying to figure out you know, what we could burn in the wood stove when we ran out of firewood. But we're actually not going to be talking about St. Petersburg, Florida. We're going to be talking about St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, which, back when this story takes place, uh, had a different name. Uh, the communists had renamed it. They were big on renaming things. They were big on a lot of bad things. But they, they renamed things, uh, and they renamed it Leningrad. So this beautiful old city, St. Petersburg, was called Leningrad for a while. And in the summer of 1941, it came under siege by the Nazis. The German army invaded the Soviet Union, and one of the main targets of their invasion was St. Petersburg. They surrounded the city. No one could get in or out. And they began to bombard it and bomb it, and uh, they cut it off from food supplies. So the soldiers and the civilian population were trapped together. The city would remain under siege for two and a half years. Two and a half years. After a while, they were able to build a road across a frozen lake to get some supplies in, but not enough. Hundreds of thousands of people died. Many starved to death. It got very, very bad. It got worse than I'm going to talk about here, but it got very bad. Um, they started off with scrambling for crumbs at the floors of abandoned bakeries, and then it got worse from there. They ran out of food. So the city had no hope. Hitler set a date at which he and his generals were going to have a victory feast at the hotel in the center of town, August 9th, 1942. They were going to have a victory feast, and then they were going to wipe that city from the face of the earth. They had plans for what was then the Soviet Union, and it did not include, well, most of the people, and it did not include most of the cities. So August 9th was the day of the city's execution. In that city lived a man named Dmitry Shostakovich, and he was a composer of music. Uh, he tried to volunteer for the army to defend the city, but his eyesight was very bad. So they said, please don't. You'll, if you're more dangerous to yourself than to the enemy. And then he tried being a volunteer firefighter, but it turns out you need kind of good eyesight for that as well. They said, what we really need is music. Can you write us something? And so while the bombs and shells were falling around him, he began to compose a piece. 
He said, I need to write something that will talk about the pain of what we're going through with the instruments and will express through music the hope that can keep us going, the hope of future liberation and victory that I hope will keep us going. He wrote the piece, and then they said, well, we need to perform it. But half of the orchestra was dead. And the rest of them were actually so weak and starving that it was hard for them to play instruments. It was hard for the tuba player to get enough air to blow through a tuba. It was hard for the trumpet player to have enough oomph to blow through a trumpet. So they gathered as many musicians as they could find together, and then they gathered together um, anybody basically who could play. They said, can you play? And they gathered all these musicians together. They only had a chance to rehearse the whole thing once. They rehearsed it in pieces, and they would come and say, well, who can be at rehearsal today, and who's still alive, basically? Musicians being musicians, not everybody artistically agreed with all the choices that Shostakovich had made. One guy said, well, I don't like this, it's a little long, it's a little weird. And they said, well, if you're in the orchestra that's playing this, we'll give you extra rations. And he said, I like it. <laughs> this piece just got a lot better. I will play. People sacrificed the tiny bit of food that they had to give food to the musicians so that they could have the strength to play. So they gathered together. They didn't have much chance to rehearse it, um, but on August 9th, the day when the city had been supposed to have been conquered, when Hitler and his generals were going to have a victory party in the center of town, on August 9th, the musicians gathered together and they played Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony for the first time in that city, a city that was being bombed into rubble, a song of hope and of victory. And they performed it not only for anybody who could fit in their little hall, but also they hooked it up to a uh, loudspeaker so it could be broadcast around the city and to radio speakers so that people huddled in basements could hear it and then people all around the world. And uh, the Red Army, not known for their artistic sensibilities, actually chipped in by doing a surprise bombardment of the German lines an hour before the concert started so that the German guns would fall silent and they would be knocked back enough that they would give an hour or two respite and they wouldn't be able to interrupt the concert. Musicians played. The piece was very long. Shostakovich was kind of known for long pieces. It was over an hour. By all accounts, it actually wasn't a really great first performance. Um, some people fainted from hunger and weakness. They'd only rehearsed it once together. It wasn't great. But when it was over, people clapped and couldn't stop clapping. And people around the city heard it, and people around the world heard that broadcast. And then other orchestras began to play it in other places. The city wouldn't be liberated for another year and a half, but they already had that song of hope in the middle of a zone of death and destruction and oppression. This money that God has provided through individuals, through us, through many other churches and organizations, this money is not money. It is not marks on a thermometer. It is not ones and zeros moving around in people's bank accounts. It is not dollar bills. This money is a song of hope in a besieged city. This money is a song of hope in a war zone. Our world is still very much hurting. There are still civilians huddled in basements, wondering if they're going to be bombed or shelled. There are civilians doing that right now, this morning, including some people we know, in Tel Aviv and in Gaza and all around Ukraine and other places. There are horrible things happening. There are things that happened this week as we were getting ready for this service among our, even our own community. People get terribly sick. People we love die. Terrible accidents happen. And people struggle under the weight of burdensome bills that they can't pay. And all the while, there's noise, 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 noise. Everybody talks about love, everybody talks about justice, everybody talks about care. Words, 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 words. But people don't need more words. There's a lot of words. Most of them are actually made up by bot farms in like northern Macedonia or something. So don't believe anything you read. It's just... But what people need is a concrete action that will be like a song of hope in a besieged city. 
like Jeremiah in the Old Testament, where God tells him, hey, your town's about to be completely overrun by the Babylonians. I want you to make a real estate investment and buy a piece of land. It doesn't make sense unless you have that hope that says there is a God in the world, there is love, and there is justice. This, um, this money is going to pay off the debts, the medical debts of 3,300 people in Charles City, James City, New Kent, and Henrico. That is amazing. That's going to be life-changing for 3,300 people, which means, really, 3,300 families and households. It's going to lift people up. But, as I'm sure you know, this does not solve the problem. There's a lot more debt than that, just even in Virginia, much less around the country. This, this is not a solution, really. And really, this shouldn't, as we've said many times during this campaign, we shouldn't have to be doing this. But this is a banner of hope. This is an action, a song in the middle of a besieged city that is not just talk, but is putting that talk into real, concrete work. As we read in the reading uh, from Isaiah, and then as we read again in the reading from 1 John, both of those readings, you probably notice, he was talking about how talk is cheap. But God doesn't want us to just say, oh, we love you. God bless. You know, we, we, we changed our Instagram filter to say, like, we love people. Or we put on our website, we love people. Or, or we sang a song or we came to church. Those are all great things. But God says, the worship that I really want is for you to do away with oppression and for you to show your love by having concrete compassion, by, by sharing this world's goods with your brother and sister who are in need. First John says, dear children, let us not love just in words or tongue. Because talk is cheap. Let us love in actions and in truth. So that's what we're trying to do today. We're trying to sing a song of hope in the middle of a dark world. And to say to people, this is evidence. This is evidence that there is a God who is loving and who, is, who cares about not just your soul, but your body and your bank account. And he cares about that. He wants to help you in ways that aren't just emotional and spiritual, although he wants that as well. And we know that because, as 1 John says, he says, this is how we know what love is. Because back then, just like now, there's a lot of ways to say love, and people say, you know, I love my dog, I love ice cream, I love whatever. It, there's all these ways to say love, so you have to define love because everybody thinks they know what it means. John says, this is how we know what it means. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. This is the thing that shows us that God doesn't just give us some good advice from far away and say, here's 10 things you ought to do to make life easier. God doesn't just say, oh, I'm really thinking about you. I hope, I hope things go better. No. He laid down his life for us. And that doesn't just talk about the cross, of, of the death of Jesus. His entire life, his entire existence was a laying down of his life. He came from heaven where everybody liked him and everybody loved him and he had everything he wanted. He laid aside his glory and power and became this nobody from nowheresville in this oppressed, occupied territory and uh, identified with the poor and had to put up with people not liking him and not understanding him and his family thought he was crazy and he loved and served. It says he didn't come to be served but to serve. He laid down his entire life and then at the cross where we had a debt of all the things we have done, all the things we have neglected to do, all the systems that we've allowed ourselves to be a part of, all the conscious and unconscious act, everything that we've done that has added up to a huge debt that we could never pay. It says, he nailed that to the cross, Colossians says, and then blew it up. He shredded it. It's not hanging over your head anymore. And he wants us to reflect that same love and grace to others in actions like this. And in whatever you can do, when you remember how much God loves you, how much he's given you, how much he's forgiven you, how much he gives you every day, it should enable you to sing a song of hope in whatever besieged city or war zone you find yourself in. It might be doing a campaign like this. And while we're at it, we encourage other churches to do this because there's more debt out there. Get to it. It's fun. Um, it's, it's a little bit of work, but it's fun. 
But it doesn't have to look like this. It could be uh, speaking kind advice or just a, being a listening ear to that person who needs a listening ear. It could be uh, being there for people who need to be been there, been, have, having need been to have someone there. having been, been there for them. <laughs> for. It, it could be like we're doing uh, next Sunday and we're going over and we're doing a bunch of yard work for the autos because Steve uh, can't do it while he's recovering from surgery. That's love. That's a symbol that you are not alone, that you have people helping you. Okay? So let your imagination run wild, sparked by the Holy Spirit, who will give you things to do as you move forward with that. So we are so thankful for God has provided uh, this money, and we pray that it will go to amazing uses to free people up in ways that perhaps they've not been free for years. And we believe that even though the world remains dark, remains very uncertain and full of suffering, that God will continue to enable us to sing a song of hope, even where there is death. Let's pray. Our God, we are amazed that you have provided abundantly so much more than we ever expected, and uh, that you have um, done it not just through us, but through so many churches and organizations and groups and individuals, bringing people together from all corners of this region. We pray uh, that this system would not stay as it is, that, that the complexities of, of all the things that go into making healthcare so expensive and so uh, debt-ridden and burdensome for people, that you would guide and direct the folks who are working to change that and to change the system. We pray uh, for us that you would continue to show us how much we've received and how much uh, help and grace we get every day. We thank you for that. In the name of Christ.
As I mentioned before, uh, we did not do this alone. Um, we did this together with several uh, churches, organizations, and individuals. And uh, if you look at the inserts, we got the final figures back that we abolished $1,957,843 for the medical debt for 3,300 individuals. 138 of them were in Charles City County. Uh, this coming week, we expect to get a more detailed breakdown of how many were in each of the other counties and what the average debt payoff that it was. Um, not every uh, church that helped out or organization was able to send someone here this morning. Uh, some did, and we'll have them up in a minute. But I wanted to list all the churches, um, whether they were here or not. St. John Baptist Church in Charles City, The Rock River Outreach Center, Charles City County, Westover Episcopal Church, also in Charles City, St. Martin's Episcopal Church in James City, and the Charles City County Clergy Conference. Uh, could we please thank them with a round of applause? And there were many individuals, uh, some named, some anonymous, who donated. We are so, so grateful for everyone who helped spread the word, helped design flyers, helped stuff envelopes, put up uh, flyers where they weren't supposed to be. We are very appreciative. So now, um, I would like to ask to come up the representatives of, I believe we have with us today, representatives from Westover Episcopal Church and St. Martin's Episcopal Church. If you would come up this time. Today with us we have representatives from uh, Westover Episcopal Church in uh, Charles City County and St. Martin's Episcopal Church in uh, James City County and then uh, St. John and The Rock were not able to be here but they both send their greetings. So now, um, tiny little bit of explanation. If you Google Liturgy for the Abolition of Medical Debts, you will not find one. Um, most, <laughs> occasions, one. most occasions you can find a prayer for. Um, so we had to sort of put one together. Um, what we're going to do is we're going, Mel is going to lead us, and we're going to read responsibly this two-page liturgy of the abolition of medical debts. Y'all are the bold parts. Y'all y'all are the bold parts. That's Everybody says that. And what we have here are some medical bills. And um, much like the prophets of old, we are going to perform a symbolic action. And every time that we get to a bold responding line, the folks up here from these churches will be ripping in half these medical bills. This one help. More than in half. Yeah, just rip them up. And you can let it fall on the floor, we're gonna make a mess, because no, 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 it's messy. So, um, every time we get to a bold part, we say, may your kingdom come, and all those things after that, <coughs> we rip it in half, and um, then when we get to the very end where it says, may your kingdom come, amen, we're gonna just throw it up in the air. And it's going to blow away in the wind or the air conditioning. And um, there are going to be some confetti pops. They're not very loud. We've tested them out. But um, we, we know of no other way to show joy around here than with confetti. So we were going to do it. Thankful we don't have a ram's horn. Okay. Let's pray together. Loving and creating God, we thank you for your many gifts to each and all of us. We thank you for your life and strength. For our world in its infinite beauty and wonder, for good work to do. We thank you for creating human beings in your image with the wisdom and skill to invent medicines, perform surgeries, and do the holy work of healing. But we grieve that so many people, especially the poorest who you love and stand beside, are burdened by unpayable debts simply because they need medical care. Lord, you know this is not how the world should be. As your son taught us, we pray. May your kingdom come, may all have what they need. Generous God, we thank you for your amazing provision of funds to wipe out these debts. Thank you for bringing together churches and individuals from different traditions, neighborhoods, and counties to meet this need. Thank you for showing a hurt world your love and care. We ask that you continue to open our eyes to the needs around us and give us your divine wisdom, generosity, and courage 
to meet those needs as your son taught us to pray. May your kingdom come. May your church show Christ to the world. Jesus, who healed people with great compassion and without charging them, you became angry when corrupt institutions and greedy people took the last pennies of the poor or blocked people from heal the healing that you offered. We lay our broken and unjust systems before you, asking that you soften stony hearts and bring repentance and lasting change where there has been greed and exploitation. As you taught us, we pray. May, May your kingdom come. May, May your justice triumph over evil. Spirit of Freedom, we thank you for freeing over 3,000 people and their families from these deaths. We are humbled that you allowed us to be a small part of this work. We ask that you would give these families new hope and new visions of possibility, and that they would thrive. As Jesus, upon whom you put the power of liberation, taught us, we pray. May your kingdom come. May hope overcome despair. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us forgiveness and grace that we do not deserve. We thank you for providing far more than we imagined was possible, not only in this campaign, but throughout our lives. Thank you for the love that you show us every day. Help us to show that love to others, not just in empty words, but in actions and in truth, until that day when all wounds are healed, all wrongs are righted, and all evil is wiped away. May your kingdom come. Amen.
God, we thank you for your overwhelming love and provision for us. We thank you that you did not stand aloof from our needs or waited until we deserved it, but you reached into our broken world to show love, not just through words, but through concrete and even painful sacrificial action. We pray that you will open our eyes to where this world needs songs of hope, sung through action and word and presence in hard places, and that we will be there to do it. We thank you for the energy that you give us to do it, and that we have been able to be a part of this, this particular action. We pray again for all who receive this help, that uh, it will be um, a way for them to thrive and to uh, step forward in new life and new possibilities. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs> Birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday, Should I stop this? Yes, I'm going to stop it. <laughs> 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 